Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. It's a horribly ugly day here. It's raining outside, but gives us a great opportunity to discuss with you a new project. And in today's project, we're gonna look at a new construction apartment complex. New construction comes with a whole different world of opportunity and issues as opposed to just residential cleaning. So let's, let's look at a couple things that you're considering when you get into construction cleanup. How much square footage are you dealing with? Where in the process of the construction is the job currently? How many stories? Is red mud present? Are there mortar tags? Is there sheetrock mud, concrete, or mortar on the flat surfaces? Just a few things, guys, that you're looking for when you go to these jobs. In this episode, there are gonna be several different substrates to tackle, and we're going to walk you through the entire process. It takes more than pressure to get the job done. I'm Jonathan with TKIM. Follow along as we get the down and dirty on how to save money, finish faster, and be a successful pressure washing pro. First, I would like to give a special shout out to Donnie Chilton and Adventure Pro Wash for their outstanding work on this project. Let me first stress the number one thing with any project is the pre-planning stage. How and with what are you going to clean each surface? Before you start cleaning any substrate, we highly recommend testing. If you just test a small portion of each surface with the chemicals you plan on using, then you're truly gonna understand how much chemical you're gonna need how much dwell time is needed, and if it's actually gonna clean that surface. This project did not require any testing as the cleaning was fairly routine. First thing in this project is we started in the breezeways. First thing Donnie did was he used a blower just to blow off any loose sediment, any loose trash, anything out of the breezeways before he actually started cleaning with water. Then wet all surfaces down with water, allowing the surfaces to cool and accept any chemical that you might be using. Next thing he did, because he spot sprayed mortar tags, concrete tags, sheetrock, mud, anything on the flat surfaces that needed to be loosened with an acid-based cleaner. Then after that had enough dwell time, he went back and physically scraped that with a scraper blade. Next thing was the vertical surface. All the vertical surfaces in this project were vinyl siding. Donnie used a J-rod with a wide fan spray and just medium pressure just to get a good rinse all this. Mainly, the whole purpose is cobwebs, any kind of construction dust just to get a good rinse on everything. On the top floors where the concrete is a lighter weight concrete, don't really want to use chemical, don't want to use a lot of pressure, don't want to damage the concrete. So what we suggested was, here again, low pressure, wide fan spray, really just to clean the surface, rid it of any red mud, any other construction dust, wash it down the stairwells, give it a good cleaning over top of the surface. Once we reached the stairwells, a little bit heavier duty concrete, we decided to use a rotary nozzle. We used the rotary nozzle to be able to concentrate in the corners and other areas to help loosen mortar tags or any heavy duty sediment that had built up. Once the stairwells were completed, we used the same rotary nozzle on the bottom floor in the corners along all the walls prepping the surface to be able to use a surface cleaner. Once you're completed there, then we went back over everything with a 19 inch Wishful Wash Classic surface cleaner. Something we sell in the store, recommend you guys come by and take a look at it. After all that's completed, a good final rinse is very needed because what that does is helps clean everything out and leaves the project clean looking. Now that you've watched this, you might be thinking, how can I do commercial work? I tell you what, we're gonna give you three tips to help you secure commercial jobs. Number one, make sure you physically walk the property. This will help you gain a true understanding of how much area there is to clean. Number two, when bidding commercial properties, you still need to use the square foot model, but make sure to adjust to a realistic price that fits the project. Just remember, you're not going to use the same amount of chemical you use on residential projects. And number three, last tip, but also one of the most important, be flexible. Large construction projects have a lot of contractors at once. You may have to adjust your cleaning schedule, but remember, you ultimately want this job and you wanna get it done rightly. Remember guys, like this video if you do, subscribe if you haven't, and let us help you save money, finish faster, and become a successful pressure washing pro.